What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be covering multiple controllers and gamepads being used to control multiple players. Meaning, we'll be able to plug in multiple controllers to our device and actually control our players with it. So these are two gamepads right now that are controlling the players. Now, that's not going to stop you from using keyboard mode unless you explicitly say, hey, I don't, I don't want them to be able to use the keyboard, in which case, of course, that would stop you from being able to use keyboard mode. But what I'm saying is you can still use all your regular controls, but we're going to add support for game pads because it's not quite as simple as I made it out to be. You will require, it will require some extra logic when going through game pad uh, setup and things like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix that all up here. But you can see I can do everything on the game pad that I can do on the keyboard and I don't even need to set up multiple controls for my game pads because each device knows to look for a certain button once the player and the character have been possessed by the player controller that is being used. So, uh, just a quick note, this warning is from the widget, the character select screen widget, it's been there for a while. I've been saying I'm gonna take care of it. I am going to, it's just I haven't released the next uh, character select screen episode yet, so I haven't fixed it just yet. But don't worry, we'll be fixing that, and it's not related to this episode. All right, there's not a lot of logic we have to we have to do in today's episode, but it's important that I go over kind of how we're going to set this up. That way, you guys can understand what's happening. And I also want to give a quick shout out to Genius of Nothing. Thank you for recommending this idea. I've gotten it a few times, but I finally decided to sit down and use the controllers and get this done for you guys. So. Yep, here we go. And because of that, because of Genius of Nothing, we're going to be doing this mainly in Blueprint. Uh, that was their request, and honestly, either way, if you do it in Code or Blueprint, the, it's pretty simple how you actually do it, logic-wise. Um, it stays just about the same. So I'll go over the two parts that I do in Code, and then show you guys what I've done in Blueprint, and then kind of tell you how I'd convert it. But before we get into that, let's set a few settings in our project settings. So if you go to Edit, Project Settings, and then go to Maps and Modes. You can go ahead and disable Use Split Screen here. So Use Split Screen will quite literally, and we can actually do it here and show you. If you leave this on, when you have multiple players added, it's going to do some, some pretty cool stuff. Like, you have multiple players, you can see the first camera is using the camera I've set up in the game, and then the other cameras afterward they use their own player controllers that get spawned with cameras and things like that. Now, it's pretty cool, uh, although you probably don't want this for your Super Smash Brothers game. So we're gonna disable it. You can always enable it later. You can always change it depending on the game mode and things like that. So don't, don't get stressed over this, um, but I'd disable it for now, just so you don't have to see that and you can see it all on the one screen like I had it. Then go to engine input right here, and I'm gonna talk about my input a little bit. So if you've been following the series, and it's okay if you haven't, uh, you won't need to for this episode to be honest. If you'd like to catch up, I'll leave a link in the iCard right here in the top right corner. And that'll be the first episode of the Super Smash Brothers series so you can catch up with what we're doing. Uh, if you don't care, no worries, but it will explain some of this stuff. So. In the other episodes of the series, I had these things like Jump P2, Basic Attack P2, and I, I did that for 3 and 4 as well. So characters 1 through 4 had their own set of attacks. Now, that's okay. That's actually pretty much how you have to do it for keyboard. You can do it different ways, but if you want to have multiple characters on one keyboard, it's tough. This is probably the easiest way. So this is fine, you leave it, you don't have to get rid of it. But from here on out, if we're working with gamepads, and I'll be supporting both in the series, so don't worry about that if you wanna continue using keyboard. But if you if you wanna support controller, you don't have to make, like, you don't have to add these to P2, P3, P4. All you have to do is have one axis mapping for the direction you're moving, and you're going to have, you're going to add the gamepad input to at least one mapping for all of them that you're using. So, here's an example. You see how I have jump, basic attack, forward attack, and then move right and move right controller. Let me show you the difference. Let me load up a character really quickly. 
Now in our character, in our character, you can see that I was doing player two, player three, and player four on the keyboard separately from how I was doing player one. All of these were being done with input or action mappings and axis mappings in the blueprint of the character. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. To be honest, if you're doing your, your mappings in blueprint, that's how you do it anyway. But what I wanted to show you is that I don't have to change anything with any of these guys. They can stay. That's specifically for keyboard mode. So we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with them. I'm gonna close this and just leave it alone. I want to bring this window back up and show you that the other ones, like my original jump, my basic attack, my forward attack, and this new one that I've added, move right controller, are now slightly different. I've added gamepad elements to them that will go across all characters that get possessed that have possession over a pawn. So, long story short, what I'm trying to say. Basically, all your inputs that you want to use, and probably the, the version without like P1 or P2 or P3 or whatever, just jump, basic attack, forward attack, all these can have gamepad elements and allow us, all of our characters, to use these. So, to jump, go ahead and add the control that you want on gamepad. You can always click plus here to add a new input. So if you if you ran out, it's W and spacebar for me. We're both jump. Um, to be honest, I probably shouldn't have spacebar in here because it's W. So I'm actually going to take it out right now. But go and look for whatever you want. I look for gamepad, left thumbstick, Y axis. Right now, it doesn't much matter if you do Y axis or thumbstick up. It will depend how much, like if you want your jump to be static and jump a certain height, or if you want to depend on how far they lifted the joystick up and. and if they've held it and things like that, then you're probably gonna wanna use the game left thumbstick Y axis. If it's a static jump and just always a certain height, you can use left thumbstick up. Then for my basic attack, I've chosen gamepad face button left. And, game, and for forward attack, which is just another attack you can do, I've chosen gamepad face button top. Now the face buttons, like I'm using two wired 360 controllers here. Now, uh, quick note, Unreal does not like D input controllers. You can make them work, and you can make them work with by emulating X input. There's programs out there to do that. I've been told I've never used one. And you can also go ahead and actually support D input in the engine itself, but it's it's a lot more work. We're not gonna be covering that today. So if you don't have a, if like PlayStation has a D input controller. If you want to use that, I will be making an episode on it, but it won't be for a bit, and it's going to take some work. So if you have an X input controller or can emulate that, that would be the best for now so you can get the functionality down. The good news is when we do the D input logic, we, we don't have to change anything with this. We're actually going to basically do the exact same logic here. So you, you won't have to change anything down the line. So you can continue to follow the series if you'd like. We just have to actually convert the D input to X input in the engine. All right. Now, um, we have our, our value set up. So for these face buttons, since I mentioned these were X input, face buttons are your A, X, Y, and B on an Xbox 360 controller. So face button left is X, because X is the left of the four face buttons. And then face button top is Y, that's the top of the four. Then I also have, you can see move right actually had the gamepad left thumbstick X axis before. I've removed it from there, that way this remains a keyboard only ax uh, axis mapping. And I've also added move right controller, which has the gamepad left thumbstick X axis. Okay. That's all we're doing with that, but I wanted to go over that pretty explicitly because it's pretty important. If you don't have these right, you could screw up how your characters are getting their input. So now that you've seen all the inputs I've added, you can see all these don't have anything with gamepads in them. Just to, to prove my point. Nothing with gamepads in any of these. I've added this. Um, but we're not going to be covering that today. That's for another episode. So don't worry about that. Okay. So I'm not going to sit here and close all these and waste your time. But there you go. You can see that they are all untouched by the gamepad other than the ones I've shown you. So let's exit this. 
we're gonna go over the two things we need to do in code first and I'll show you how I would convert them to blueprint if you are doing blueprint only okay so in your base game instance now if you've been following the series you'll have this class if you haven't it's actually okay just go ahead and either make a new code class or make a new blueprint class either way just go to add new, we'll do blueprint in this case, and then just type in game instance. Use this as the parent, select it, and then name it to be whatever you want. When you do that, quick note, you do have to go into project settings, go to maps and modes, and set your game instance class to the new one you just made. Mine was base game instance, before you'll see anything working. But assuming that uh, you do that or you already have your game instance class, we need to go into it and we need to make a variable. We need, if we're doing it in code like I am, you need a variable that can be accessed in blueprints anyway. So in this case, we have a boolean is the device used for multiple players. This boolean you might have seen around, I've been playing around with it a bit in the series, but this boolean essentially means um, is this device or is a device going to be used to have multiple players using it at once, right? Is it going to be controlled by multiple players at once? So if we have controllers, that's false. If we have controllers, every individual should have a controller. If we have the keyboard, then every individual might be on the keyboard. So this is basically is keyboard mode would be an easier way to say it potentially, but I didn't want to specify keyboard just in case. Okay, so switch switch the wrong tab there. <laughs> Make sure you have it U property and it's edit edit anywhere blueprint read write. I just added the category of input mode, but it doesn't much matter. Just make sure it's edit anywhere and blueprint read write, so we can grab it in our blueprint game mode later on. You don't have to do anything with this in the code; just add it. And then the other thing we have to do is just go ahead and add our new axis mapping because. The other ones are okay, all the action mappings are okay, but we did add the axis mapping that was separate because we wanted to separate keyboard axis mappings from uh, X input gamepad axis mappings. So go ahead and add your move right controller. If you notice, it's literally the same thing. Exactly the same thing other than this. So you can copy the move right that you already have, switch it with move right controller. It's just calling our move right function, which is right here, which just adds the, the movement in the press direction, right? Simple enough. If we're left on the joystick, we wanna go left. If we're right on the joystick, we wanna go right. Okay, so those are the two things we're doing in code. You could always bind this axis in the blueprint if you're doing blueprint only, and you could always make this game instance, a blueprint class, and then you make the Boolean in there. So no stress. Now, let's go into the blueprint. Now this is the rest of the logic we have, and it's honestly not a ton, so it's not gonna be too bad. But go into your base game mode BP, or wherever you have your, your game mode at, wherever you're spawning your players at. And uh, what we wanna do here is we want to grab our base game instance and then set a reference so we can use it later. Basically, in begin play, you can call a node get game instance, which is an Unreal function. It just literally goes and grabs the game instance object. You drag off the return value, cast your base game instance right here, the new game instance that we just made. And then lastly, drag off of that and uh, hit promote to variable right here, which will make a variable for you called like new ver. Right click on it, rename it, and call it game instance reference. Basically, if this is valid, then we're gonna set the game instance reference here to be this class instance. Or this class, I guess. But there you go. So now we have access to this variable, is device used for multiple players. Make sure, by the way, I forgot to mention it, make sure after you're done all your code changes, you build solution, go back into Unreal and compile if necessary. Okay. And this, this Boolean can now be used by the game instance reference. We made it in there. So you can go ahead and drag off the game instance reference and say set is device used for multiple players. 
click this, and then I left it at false because we're testing controller input, but you can make it whatever you want. Now, in another episode, we will be covering making it so it's kind of automatic where it determines if you're using controllers or keyboard. It's not quite that simple, but we can make it work. For now, we're just going to set it to the value we want so we can test and make sure the controllers are even working at all. So I'm setting it to false. The device is not being used for multiple players, meaning we're not in keyboard mode, meaning we have controllers. If you've been following the series, uh, the rest of this will look very similar to you. We go through our start tags, go through our players that we that were chosen during the character select screen. We spawn our characters for player one. We use get player controller zero, which this you might be like, ah, is it still player controller zero with the uh, different inputs and stuff? So uh, this stuff might change based on if we want to be able to control what character is player one. Like if player one can drop out and another player can take a spot. It also will definitely have to change for online multiplayer. For now, it's fine. Player controller with player index zero will always be your keyboard and your first X input controller that was plugged in. So it's okay for now, we can change it later. Then we add our players to the array, then we loop through them and we spawn our players. So none of this was any different than what we've already done other than in begin play where we set the game instance reference and then set is device used for multiple players. So if you've been following the series, you're golden. Now go into spawn players, excuse me, spawn player. This is all, all the same too. We set our player start tag, we check if it's, if it's not taken, and if it's not taken, we go to spawn our character there based on the class they are. Now, we're missing, we were spawning a base player controller actor here, but we're not doing that here anymore. We're gonna move it somewhere else. We're gonna move it and only do it if it's necessary. So in our switch where we determine what character we're spawning for the other players, not the first player, because we were always assuming there's a first character here, but for our other characters where we have four um, or, or eight or however many you have, but when we have the rest of these, we have to determine how we're gonna possess them. So I've written a function called possess player. You can go ahead and go to your functions over here, hit plus function, call it possess player. Now go into it, you'll just have this node, it won't have the, the character reference thing here or anything, we have to do that on our own, but this is the function. So just a note, possess player is not anything that exists already, this is what we're, we're making now, okay? So click on your possess player node here at the start. Uh, go ahead and go to inputs in the details panel and then hit plus new parameter. And then find the parent type of your fighter. We don't care what fighter it is. So you don't, you know, if you have like Mario and Bowser and this guy's Bowser, we don't care if he's Bowser. We just care that he's a fighter. So we just wanna grab the parent class, whoever that is. For me, that is my code class, but it could very well be your blueprint class if you're doing blueprint only. Just make sure you're doing, you're using the class that is, it's, it's the parent to the highest tier. For me, it's just the SSB template character. Okay, that's the type I'm using and I called it character reference. That way we can pass any character type we want in there as long as it's that class or a child of that class and it will work. Okay. So now you'll have this node in here and put, and um, it'll be called character reference or whatever you called it. We just need to do a little bit of logic here to determine if what, uh, what player controllers we need to spawn and how we need to possess them. So first of all, let's go back out to, and I keep clicking the wrong tab, let me move this over. Let's go back to spawn player. Now the character reference that we're putting into the possess player function is the character that we're spawning right before. So see we're uh, spawning our SSB template character BP and SSB template character 2 BP, which are just two different mannequins. I actually had it open earlier, but like, like one's this guy and one's this guy. I don't know why this opened as a full tab, but you can, you get the point. So there you go. Whatever character we're spawning, that's what we're adding is the character reference here. Now let's follow the line. So uh, right off the bat, when we possess player, we wanna grab our game instance reference so you can drag it on here. We wanna pull from it and type is device used for multiple players and get it. And then we wanna drag off that and do a branch. 
and that's what we've done right up here. So I'm gonna delete the stuff I just typed out right below. That's what these things are. So uh, if the device is being used for multiple players, this is keyboard mode, meaning we wanna do the same logic we were already doing. So I moved the logic where we spawn our base player controller and possess the, the pawn to inside this function. So um, basically, Drag off of your character reference because when you spawn an actor from class, it requires a transform. So drag off of this, type get actor transform. Like I've got here. And then just right click and do spawn actor from class. And then you can see I have my base player controller class here. And I drag my get actor transform into it right here, and then I possess it. So I drag off of this and type possess. And possess it with the character reference. You can see this is the character reference. It's coming the whole way, coming the whole way, and it possesses. There you go. So that's the logic we were already doing in the keyboard. Now, the logic we're doing for the controllers is pretty similar, to be honest, but it's slightly different because of the way Unreal handles it. So if it's false that this device is being used for multiple players, that means every player has their own device. Every player has their own controller. So we need to do logic for each of the controllers. We can call a function called create player. This is an unreal function. This is an unreal function. This is not function we made. So create player, just like this. And you can hit the little down arrow to expose this Boolean, which is the spawn player controller Boolean. You can see that's what I have right here. So I'm going to delete this. Okay, when we're doing this, create player literally creates a new player for this game, as the comment says. What it does is it, it creates a new player in Unreal side. It assigns a new controller ID to either the value we give it or the next available value. So if this controller ID, if I leave it at negative one, the comment will tell you, but a value of negative one specifies to use the next available ID. So if I leave it at negative one and we have just a keyboard in, and one controller in, then it's gonna be zero because your first keyboard and your first X input gamepad are always gonna be controller ID zero, even if they're plugged in together. But when I plug in my second controller ID, or excuse me, when I plug in my second controller, the, its controller ID is one. So if I had four controllers, then it would go zero, one, two, three as my controller IDs. So leaving it at negative one automatically does this work for you. And then I still spawn the player controller. You could technically spawn your own player controller and and switch it out of the player and then possess it, but it's a lot more work than is necessary. Just spawn the player controller. If you have anything specific from a player controller that you wrote that you need, cast it, save the reference out to a variable, and then possess that. Okay. So leave this checked, leave this negative one, and then just possess it drag off right off the return value. The return value is the player controller that got spawned using this Boolean. And then you can just call possess. And then you can see this node right here is the character reference again. So drag that into the in pawn and you're good to go. All right. So now we've created players for every time we're spawning a player based on if devices used for multiple players or not which means we'll have enough players that if everyone's on a controller, then they'll be able to possess their pawns. By the way, nothing else has changed after spawn player. And same with within spawn player, it's all the same. I didn't change anything afterward. So, should be good to go there. And there you go, guys. So now if we come in here, I can put whatever character I want. I can be my other character. Then I can possess them with the two controllers I have. I don't have four controllers. I can't possess them all with the uh, with the, the controllers, but I, I can still control them with the keyboard. But now you can go ahead and control as many characters as you want with controllers, depending on how many co uh, controllers you have and how many characters are in the game. So there you go. Um, there's not much else to say. That's that's how you can get basic logic working to control multiple characters with multiple gamepads. We will be doing another episode on this probably a little bit down the line, 
where we do the automatic assign, automatic figure out if we're using keyboard or, or controller and all that. And we're also going to be doing uh, another episode of this this Sunday. The date's not important. Just if you see that this video is more than two days old, then this is probably relevant. If you're interested in uh, looking at using multiple controllers, multiple game pads for your game in like a fighting game, uh, not like Super Smash Brothers, but more in the lines of uh, Super, or excuse me, more in the lines of Street Fighter then you might want to watch that video because I do do it slightly differently and I also have to limit the way that they use the controller and the keyboard simply so that they can't abuse the power of using them both. But I just want to bring that up. If you're interested in this and this didn't quite hit what you were looking for, there will be a fighting game version of this out very soon. So anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video and it helps you out, please subscribe. It does more for the channel than anything else you can do, and it just lets me know I'm doing a good job and helping you learn. Again, thank you to Genius of Nothing for the suggestion. I hope this helps you out. And if you had any issues with this, feel free to reach out to me on Discord, or email me, or leave a comment, whatever you'd like to do. <laughs> you got a lot of options, but feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you. Um, it's no problem at all. This is kind of complicated because it is different. It's a lot of different stuff. So even though it didn't look that complicated, it can be tough. And also, Unreal is notorious for if you have one one mistake with possession or with having like too little input devices, it won't tell you. So you'll just kind of be stuck there like, why the heck isn't my guy moving? So no worries. But let me know if you need any help. Uh, Discord link's in the description if you want to join it. And lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Row 27 Someone took Sean the Bro. Still a little bit salty about it, but it's okay. Um, no, if you'd like to come support us, we play Souls games on Wednesday. Right now we're playing Dark Souls 2. And we play horror games, specifically Resident Evil games, on Friday. So we're playing Resident Evil 7 right now, and that is incredibly fun. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, my friends.